Alrighty guys, I'm back already. So super excited to bring another video to you. I actually could not wait to make this. So um, here we go. Today I wanted to talk about abundance versus lack. And I realized that this is a pretty sensitive topic, um, especially for the Christian community who has um, some preconceived notions around prosperity gospel. So I want to clarify that that is not what I am promoting here. Um, there are good elements to what they teach. I really love um, some of the teachers today. Um, there have also been corrupt teachers in the past, and they have abused the platform that uh, was given to them. So I am not advocating for one person over the other. I more so just really want to talk about a lack mentality and how that can restrict abundance from coming into our lives. I think one of the concerns around prosperity gospel, from my perception, um, is this blind faith uh, message that if you just believe and you're a good person, you live a good life, then you'll have all of your wishes and dreams come true. And um, that's just too generic, too general, um, and uh, from what I've seen, not enough. There is more to it. Um, and we are given instructions um, through the Bible and, and some other ancient wisdom um, around how to allow the abundance to come in. And I will say allow, not necessarily create, because it is always available to us. Uh, we are really the only thing that stands in our own way. Um, so let's get into it. As far as a few things that can prevent... Um, abundance from coming to you, especially as it relates to the prosperity gospel and the things that are not addressed. Um, there are things like core beliefs, um, a very well-documented psychological um, known challenge uh, where we grow up as children being subconsciously programmed with certain beliefs, um, negative beliefs that will um, essentially become the underlying operating system for our life. Um, if we are told money doesn't grow on trees when we're kids, uh, we're going to see money as difficult to come by or um, hard to get. And uh, that can influence us in, in very subtle ways in nearly every aspect of our lives. Um, certainly environment is another factor. Um, if we are spending a lot of time with people who have all of those negative core beliefs and our environment around us is sending the message that there is only pain and suffering and shortage and lack, then that's going to be part of that programming and part of those core beliefs. So your environment certainly shapes your reality and we'll get a little bit more into that later. And then action. Do you or do you not take action? Um, simply having the belief is not enough. So. Um, just up front, those are some of the issues I see with Prosperity Gospel. I have not dug into it deeply, um, just did a little bit of research for the sake of this video to hopefully address some of the concerns that might come up when we start to talk about lack versus abundance. Um, if you see me looking around, I'm looking at some notes. I have uh, quite a few different notes here to support this. So um, there is proof, there is evidence that God intends for his followers to be his children, right? We are all his children, um, to be abundant. That, um, you know, it's, it says that our cup should overflow. Um, certainly that is not a given. It is not um, the default. We, we need to live Christ-like lives and study the instruction manual that's given to us so that we can understand how to, how to operate this meat suit um, within the environment that we're currently in. So um, just a couple of Bible verses to support that. Um, Deuteronomy 8.18 it says, You shall remember the Lord your God, for it is he who gives you the power to get wealth, that he may confirm his covenant that he swore to your fathers. Deuteronomy 28.12, The Lord will open to you his good treasures, the heavens, to give the rain to your lands in its season and bless all the work of your hands, and you shall lend to many nations and you shall not borrow. Deuteronomy 39. The Lord your God will make you abundantly prosperous in all the work of your hands, in the fruit of your womb, and in the fruit of your castle, and in the fruit of your ground. For the Lord will again take delight in prospering you, as he took delight in prospering your fathers. He wants this for us. 
it's not only available to us, he wants to give this to us. Ephesians 3.20, Now to him who is able to do far more abundantly than in all we ask to think, according to the power at work within us. So the power is within us. We have the kingdom of heaven within, right? Um, you know, in other places it says, My cup overfloweth. The overflowing abundance is available to us. Um, he came that we may have life and have it abundantly, um, that you may prosper in all that you do and wherever you turn. Um, and God is able to make all grace abound to you so that all, all sufficiently is in all things at all times. You may abound in every good work. Um, another one, last one, Luke six thirty eight. give and it will be given unto you. Good measure, pressed down, shaken together, running over, will be put in your lap. So it's given to you. It's handed to you. For with the measure you will use it, it will be measured back to you. And obviously there is some instruction in that, the giving and the receiving aspect of that. Um, they are two sides of the same coin. In order to receive, we must give. But in order to give, we need to learn how to receive. Um, and it, like I said, it goes both ways. Um, so yeah, so that is it, what I find interesting about um, the lack mentality and um, how prevalent it is in the Christian community, how prevalent it was, especially in my childhood, and and how it is addressed in a non-religious context or non-spiritual context through the law of attraction. Many cultures uh, have given instruction on how to work with this essential underlying law of the universe, law of, you know, God's creation. It, God created the world, and from my perspective, I believe magnetism is an important piece of um, what supports us and who we are and, and, who, and the world that we live in, um, and obviously magnets attract, and so uh, the law of attraction is by default going to forever be a factor in all of our lives, whether we like it or not. This is not necessarily just um, you know metaphysical woo-woo stuff this is basic 101 necessary information <laughs> to operate in this world um, we're going to attract whether we like it or not so we may as well attract with intention and understand how to attract and understand how to repel um, so the law of attraction what it is essentially um, there's a few steps here that i'll read to you this is Number one is get clear on what you want. Number two, ask the universe slash God for it. Take action. You have to help. You're part of the process. It's a co-creative process. And then trust the process. That's a big one. And we'll talk about trust versus fear and faith. Acknowledging what is being sent to you, knowing that it is available to you and it is coming. And so to increase your vibration, that I realize can be a, a, a metaphysical term, but if you think about, um, I don't want to get too far ahead. Let me finish. The last point is clear all resistance. So jumping back to vibration. Vibration is how do you feel? Do you feel good or do you feel crappy? If you're feeling positive emotions, love, joy, peace, contentment, gratitude, those are at the highest level of the scale, if you will. If you're feeling uh, anger, resentment, fear, sadness, depression, anxiety, those are all at the lower end of the spectrum. And how do you know where you're at? Obviously, you can sit and think about it and say, how am I feeling and put a label to it. But it's, it's also the feeling. It's in your body. So when you feel good, you feel open, you feel expansive, you're receiving, right? You're allowing it to come in you're at a higher vibration. If you're feeling nervous and scared and restricted and worried and depressed, right? You can see the restriction, the limiting um, that happens through your body is a, a big indicator. So I don't want to get too deep into emotions and feelings today. We'll talk about that at another time because they are very, very important. Those are your road signs, if you will. If someone says something to you and you feel yourself constrict or you go, oh my gosh, that hurts. I don't like that. That makes me feel crappy. 
that is an obvious sign that you are moving down the, the spectrum of vibration. It is also a sign that it is not an accurate statement or the perspective that you're choosing is not accurate. So I have so many things to share. It's hard to <laughs> stay on track, but we'll do that in another video. Um, so getting back to law of attraction. So getting clear on what you want, asking for it, taking action to make it happen. There's a key there though, that that action has to be divinely guided action. That so much action or doing a lot of doing, doing, doing is not going to do anything for you. You actually have to start at the beginning from a very clear and calm place. Breathe, slow down, which I have to remind myself to do and listen and be in the stillness because in the stillness is where you ask with belief. There is a tendency to say, God, please, please heal me. Please pay my bills. Please take care. Do you notice the strain in that? The, the, the efforting, the underlying message that I don't have enough? You need to ask from a perspective of faith and knowing. And this is your God-given birthright. You are a child of God. He created a beautifully abundant world for you. It is there available to you. He promised it to you. And you have to say, thank you, God. Thank you, God, for that promise that I know that you're going to take care of me. Thank you for putting food on my table, for paying my bills, a roof over my head, healing my body, the, the wisdom that I need to achieve all of these things. Thank you that I know that you've promised to me that those are coming. So yes, take action take action from a place of divine guidance where you've asked with that knowing that you deserve in a place of stillness and sit in that quiet and listen for the action. It will come. It might not come in that minute or in that hour. It might come when you're sleeping or in the shower, usually when you're relaxed and not thinking about it. Pardon the fly. <laughs> um, and then you have to trust, you have to surrender it, you have to let it go, acknowledge that it is coming, and know that it's not going to come right away. Because if we got everything we ever asked for, we would have too much. There's a process of verification that will happen where you may experience the opposite of what you've asked for, so that you can reaffirm that that's something that I still need or want. Or you may experience aspects of it. Uh, where it, there's a piece of it. If you're asking for a relationship, you want, you've got a list of five to 10 things, which I highly suggest making a list of the things that you're looking for in an ideal partner. Um, you may experience one or two of those aspects as kind of a way of confirming, are you sure you want that? Are you sure you want that? And so there, there'll be a process of validation. Um, the amount of time that it can take to come to you is relative to how big <laughs> it is um, what you've asked as well as um, your resistance to it, your belief and your faith. If there's a piece of you that says, I think I want this, but I might not want that. Or I think I want this, but I'm going to change my mind tomorrow. No, I want this. No, I'm going to change my mind again. No, I want this. That the back and forth will prevent that. Um, if you say to yourself, I think I want this, but uh, I'm not really sure. God's God's not capable. I mean, really, come on. He, <laughs> he made you and the whole entire world and it helps it continue to function every day. But, you know, we still have that that disbelief um, and that can slow it down as well. So just keep working on it. Um, you know, faith the size of a mustard seed, right? So keep building your faith. Acknowledge that you're going through the process of validation, that it is coming to you. Say thank you. Have it uh, gratitude for it every day. See it in your mind's eye. Feel it if you can. Those feelings are very, very key to to try to be in that feeling of knowing this is coming. Um, and then stay in that high high vibration, positive state. Praise God. Thank God. Keep your, your focus on what you want, not what you don't want. And make sure you clear all resistance. So any disbelief or core beliefs um, that might get in the way clear those out. So that's what the law of attraction is. Um, just kind of to touch again on magnetism, I jumped ahead a little bit there, but it's, it's an important piece of this because we are electromagnetic beings. We live in an electromagnetic environment. 
Um, if you've ever heard of Tesla towers, free energy is magnetic. Um, again, like I said, I believe that magnetism is the underlying crux of all that God created here. Even our thoughts are um, electromagnetic waves. So if you think about a magnet, it has two sides, a positive and a negative side. The positive sides attract, right? And then the positive to negative will repel. So you will push away from you um, things that are not a match to your vibration. So we talked about having a high vibration. If you're in a positive state, if you're feeling joy and love and abundance and peace and gratitude, you're going to draw in positive things, positive experiences that create more of those emotions. Your emotions, your thoughts, they're all electromagnetic. They have a magnetic pull. They either push or they pull. So if you're in that negative state and you're feeling depressed or anxious, you're going to be pulling in more of those things, which is what we really don't want. And it's so difficult because we we think that the world operates opposite of the way it does. We think that when I get this, I will be happy. When I do this, I will be happy. When I have this, I will be happy. But it's actually the opposite. When you are happy, you will have this. When you are happy, you will be able to do this. And it really is an absolute critical piece to to the, the uprooting of the lack mentality that we are addressing here today is we have religious organizations who have wanted us to feel um, negative about ourselves. We're sinners. We're broken. We need to self-sacrifice. We need to give everything away. Uh, we need to be meek. Um, and, and that's why it's so important to use um, as close to an original version of the Bible um, because the language and, and the translations and the way it's changed over time has detracted from the true intention and, and meek can be a good thing um, meek as in humble humble is very good meek as in poor or sad <laughs> and and that's you know our perception not necessarily a, a literal translation but we need to be, just be very careful about the the messages that we've been given about how we should feel about ourselves um, abundance is a good thing money is a good thing it is a means it is a medium it is a energy it is a mode of giving and receiving and a good person with a lot of money can do a lot of good things just the same as a bad person with a lot of money can do a lot of bad things money is not the problem it is the intention of the person and again that ties back to why i started value and intention based education in the first place because um, it really is all about our intentions. Um, if we have the intention of drawing in a Bentley and um, million dollar mansions and, and all of these things for our ego, that is not something that is going to serve God and that is not living a Christ-like life and that is not going to be supported. Um, it may work for some people for a while, um, and that's between them and God. But for us here today, anyone who wants to live a Christ-like life and has um, that open need in their life, whether it's finances or health or relationships, um, our needs deserve to be met. It is not selfish to want to be cared for and to want to feel safe and to want to be healthy and happy we have that right god wants that for us and we have to uproot the belief that we need to suffer to be a good christian it's just wrong because we are not able to be the light of the world to shine brightly to show others what god's gifts are and i mean that's what makes god cool again right like he wants he wants amazing things for us and he is an amazing god and our cup should be overflowing and it's it's something that he wants to change i believe in this day and age that it's time that we need to start this shift the electromagnetic brain waves that are created through our thoughts and our emotions are going to attract 
what we want into our lives. So we just need to be very aware of the creation that is always happening because we are always either attracting or repelling. And we want to be very, very mindful of what we are creating and attracting. Uh, there's another lady that I really like, uh, Dr. Carolyn Leaf. She's a neuroscientist, a Christian neuroscientist. She ties in um, a lot of different biblical passages to what is happening in the brain. And it's a fascinating book. You have to read her books. Um, but she talks about how when we have these core beliefs or repetitive thoughts, they are literal structures in the brain that um, become stronger and more prevalent over time. We, we've all heard that, you know, you, you create these neural pathways through repetition. Um, what we may not realize is those very strong, very established uh, dendrites in the structures in the brain from those thought patterns will dominate our thoughts through habit, um, which in turn will then create what that has always created. So if you have that lack mentality or that belief that money is bad, um, you are going to perpetuate that until you're able to take a step back and become aware of your thoughts, notice what you're thinking, and then start to change them. So I'm noticing that I need to do um, the next video on thought management and core beliefs. So coming up next, maybe tomorrow if you're lucky. Um, actually, sorry, it'll have to be Monday, <laughs> um, but I will get right on that. So moving on, um, the next point is fear. So fear is part of that resistance that we have to clear, those thought patterns that will prevent us from um, being able to draw in what we need. So it, it says in the Bible, um, fear not 103 times. I've heard before it was 365. I had to do some research to make sure that that was true. And then unfortunately it is not true. Um, but still 103 times, um, the Bible says fear not. It also references fear 500 times in, in the sense of teaching us how not to fear and, and how to believe or what to fear and what to fear would be, um, around, um, the negative vibrations, the, the thought demons that can happen um, when we have that negative thought pattern that has become prolific. Um, so just a, a couple of verses that I wanted to share with you. Uh, Matthew 6, 26. Look at the birds of the air. For they neither sow nor reap nor gather into barns, yet your heavenly Father feeds them. Are you not more valuable than they? Which of you, by worrying, can add one cubit to his stature. It does nothing for us. L worrying literally does nothing other than create the negative body chemistry that destroys our body, creates cancer, creates disease, creates dis-ease, illness. Um, it also um, creates those negative thought patterns and uh, thought demons um, that will haunt us. Um, another verse so why do you worry about clothing consider the lilies of the field how they grow they neither toil nor spin and yet i say to you that even solomon in all his glory was not arrayed like one of these um, another verse therefore do not worry saying what shall we eat what shall we drink what shall we wear for after all these things the gentiles seek for your heavenly father knows that you need all these things but seek first the kingdom of heaven and his righteousness and all these things shall be added unto you therefore do not worry about tomorrow for tomorrow will worry about its own things sufficient for the day is is its own trouble so be present only think about the here and now and don't worry about it again with gratitude Thank you, God, for this moment. Thank you for the roof over my head. Thank you for the food on my table. Because I can guarantee you in this moment, you have everything you need. Because God will never, ever let you be in a place where you don't. If you don't have something you want, you don't need it right now. And you're learning. You don't have it because you're learning. If you're truly asking for something that's within God's will, it will come. And for now, you're cared for. Luke 12, 7. But even the very hairs of your head are all numbered. Fear not, therefore, ye are more valuable than the sparrows. Um, Timothy 1.7 For God has not given us a spirit of fear, but of power and of love and a sound mind. Isaiah 41.10 Fear not, 
for I am with you. Be not dismayed, for I am your God. I will strengthen you. I will help you. I will uphold you with my righteous right hand. Proverbs 3, 5 through 6. Trust in the Lord with all your heart and lean not on your own understanding. In all your ways, submit to him and he will make your paths straight. Again, see that catch. You, it's not up to you. This is this is like the most freeing thing for me personally is I don't have to figure it all out. I don't have to come up with the solutions. I don't have to solve the problems. It's in God's hands. Take no thought for your life. It is in God's hands. You can't. It's completely impossible for you to solve it. It's up to him. And that's that's the the best permission slip the whole pass you've ever been given is let it go let it go and let god uh where am i here we go jeremiah 29 11 for i know the plans i have for you declares the lord plans to prosper you and not to harm you plans to give you hope and a future that might be my favorite i think i absolutely love it um he has a plan and his plan is to prosper us he does not want harm for us he wants to give us hope and he wants us to have a bright future. And that that's that should be all we need. In order to have this abundance, we must have faith. Faith is so critical. Of course, we all know the mustard seed verse when I read it anyways. Matthew 17, 20, Jesus said, Because you have so little faith, I tell you, truly I tell you, if you have faith, like a grain of a mustard seed, you can say to this mountain, move from here to there, and it will move. Nothing will be impossible for you. So this ties into the, the law of attraction. It ties into our beliefs. It ties into the environment that we surround us, ourselves with because of our beliefs. We are capable of moving mountains. God gave us that ability. We are creators. We are made in the image of God. The kingdom of heaven is within us. We are tremendously powerful. Why do you think the demons and the devil and the darkness hate us so much? Because we are amazing and we are powerful as long as we remain in God and we follow his guidance and we do his will, nothing, nothing can get in our way. Nothing can harm us. Nothing can do any more than <laughs> what we've experienced without God. So why not? Um, and a couple more verses I wanted to share just to kind of um, remind you of our creative abilities. Um, in the beginning, right? Genesis 1 26, God said, let us make man in our image after our likeness and let him have dominion, dominion over the fish of the sea, over the fowl of the air, over the cattle, and over all of the earth and every creeping thing that creepeth upon the earth. There's power in that. This is not an egoic, I am powerful, I want to control everybody, I want to rule the world. This is not a world takeover plan. This is be confident in who you are, that you deserve abundance, that you can have as much abundance as you desire, and I say that with caution because this is, again, not greed and not egotistical, but as much as you need to be safe and to feel happy and cared for. And if you have what you need to be safe and happy and cared for, you are not taking away from someone else. There is enough for all of us. We are all God's children. We are all cared for equally in the sense that we will have what we need, which of course is going to be specific to the individual. Um, going back to Genesis 127. So God created man in his own image, and in the image of God, he created him, male and female. Um, and another point to, to remember, Genesis 1-3, God created the world with his voice, right? We go back to the thoughts and the emotions and how they're electromagnetic waves um, that are attracting or repelling through the laws of magnetism and attraction. Um God said, let there be light, right? His voice created, and that voice came from a thought. Um, so again, just keeping in mind that every thought is a thing. It will create things, um, and that is due to the electromagnetic vibration that you're putting out. Is it positive or negative? What are you creating? What is it? In the intention behind it? Always remember, um, if your intention is negative, 
you're going to create negative things. If your intention is positive, uh, you're going to create positive things. Um, always ask for the best and highest for yourself and for all involved. Make sure that your intention is is good. Um, yeah, and the last piece that I wanted to share with you um, is just a little another scientific nugget I like to, to throw in there to kind of help affirm some of the things that I'm talking about. Um, in quantum mechanics, Schro Schrodinger's cat. I'm not sure if you've ever heard of that, but um, it's it's quantum physics, essentially. It's a relatively newer science, um, so they're still working to understand how, how all of this works, but um, essentially based on the perception of the observer when they peek into a box, they will see either a dead cat or an alive cat and um, the uh, essentially it says um, the fate of the cat is linked to a random somatobic event that may or may not occur and it's based on the the assumption of the perceiver so if you approach that box someone tells you there's a cat in there you don't know if it's dead or alive and then you develop your own assumption you're going to see what you assume again that's that electromagnetic wave and um, atoms will change based on the observer so there is science to support all this um, I'm not a scientist I do at times wish I could go back um, to to college again if I didn't have kids and other responsibilities I would study psychology neuroscience and quantum mechanics quantum physics so um, yeah I think that pretty much covers it um, just remember there's there's got to be balance in anything if you're all to the extreme of um, money and wealth and fame and uh, notoriety and you know egotistical driven things that's going to be a problem um, if you are to the other end of the spectrum and completely self-sacrificing and having no boundaries and not taking care of yourself and giving too much and not receiving um, that obviously is, is not a good place to be either. While it, it has been perceived as noble in the past, it is no longer cool <laughs> to self-sacrifice. Um, it's no longer ad admiral to give away your power. Um, God needs strong, abundant Christians to be out there, to be his voice, to be his warriors. We are in a spiritual war um, and it's it's up to us to to armor up and to um, put on uh, the armor of God, which includes his abundance and um, start taking divinely inspired action. So I am always available for questions I am or counseling or coaching. You can reach out to me, Rebecca at vibeimap.com. I will put that in uh, the description box as well, along with all of the the references that I had discussed today. So I love you all. Thank you so much for listening and we'll talk soon. Take care.